The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Superwoman Wellness, where you know I am determined to bring you back to your superpower self. Joining me today is something we need to talk about, and my guest just told me that she is on a mission to change the paradigm around menopause. So many women, so many patients come to me with symptoms around menopause. Today, I have Marion Stewart, the author of Manage Your Menopause Naturally, and only 27 other books. She's a world-renowned healthcare expert. She's helped tens of thousands of women around the world overcome PMS and menopause without using drugs or hormones. In 2018, she was awarded the British Empire Medal and was recognized as one of the 50 most inspirational women by the Daily Mail. Welcome to the show, Marianne. I'm so glad to have you here. And you're here in the States, but sometimes you're in in the UK, but we really have an international star with us. So, so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, well, how did you get uh, so passionate about menopause? It's not something people get very passionate about, right? (laughs) Most women I meet want to like hide or not admit that it's happening. So how did that become sort of your mission? Well, it started a long time ago. I was helping women with PMS after being given 200 medical, well, actually finding 200 medical papers on PMS. I was working with some doctors in England who were setting up the British Society for Nutritional Medicine. And I was on maternity leave, breastfeeding, feeding our second baby. And they presented me with 10,000 medical papers and that's how I found the 200 on PMS. And we set up a PMS program based on that in our clinic. And before too long, people from all over the country were getting in touch because they were just desperate for help. And so we put together a program that helped within the space of a year or two, 94% of women be completely symptom free without using drugs or hormones. And that was my passion then because I felt that women were suffering needlessly and very often given drugs or hormones and it was the stuff that was wrecking relationships Mm -hmm. self-esteem and just bringing women to a grinding halt and then in the early 90s there were medical papers studies done around the world on menopause there was one particular study that was published in the it was an Australian study published in the British Medical Journal and they fed the women flax seeds and soy and gave them some red clover and they found that they were able to bring about similar changes in the vaginal lining as they would expect to see on someone taking hormone replacement Hmm. so my little ears pricked up yeah the following year there was a study in japan uh, also on um, hot flashes and i just thought well it's time to tweak the pms program and turn it into menopause program and so we did that really successfully and I carried on helping. I had a team that then of nurses and doctors and nutritionists, and we carried on helping literally tens of thousands of women to manage their symptoms naturally. And then in, at the end of 2016, someone showed me how to make some Facebook live films, yeah. <laughs> and, which is a bit scary when you just point your phone at your face. And I made four little basic films and within the space of 12 weeks, over a million women saw those wow. films. Wow. And so I was just, inundated with the most horrendous stories of needless suffering and it made me feel I'd been helping women for quite some time by then and nothing much had changed and last year that was highlighted by a Mayo Clinic survey on doctors and gynecologists in the US showing that only seven percent of them felt adequately educated to help women going through menopause. Mm. So women are just left to fend for themselves and and they're bombing out the workplace, their relationships are breaking down and it shouldn't be like that. You know, a hundred years or so ago, we weren't living much past 50. Right. So it didn't really matter. But now when 40 something represents halfway for so many of us, it's important to learn how to get yourself into good shape so that you can have what I call a midlife refuel. And then you can come out of the end of that back on track, turbocharged, and get on with your life feeling better than you can remember because we go downhill so slowly after we have our babies and breastfeed and live life in the fast lane, we don't realize how far down we've gone until we come back up again. And we see the most incredible transformations, women who literally felt suicidal, felt like there was nothing left to live for. And we know our surveys of thousands of women mirror that too, 
they just feel like it's the end of life as they knew it. 96% of them say they're taken by surprise by menopause. Two thirds say they feel robbed by their, robbed of their life. And it's just, it's just not right because everything we do is based on published medical research. And we know that women with adequate knowledge can reclaim their well-being and also future-proof their health. So they're less likely to get things like osteoporosis, heart disease and dementia. And I believe that every single woman has a right to that knowledge and information, which is why we're on this global crusade to change the whole paradigm of menopause so that women come to understand they can simply have their midlife refuel in their 40s with no stigma and get back on track and just live the life of their dreams, as you say, a superwoman and just with a blank canvas and doing whatever they please and make longevity a much better experience for them. Oh my goodness, you are speaking my language. I am <laughs> with you on this crusade. I hate, you know, with a passion when women come to a grinding halt, when the pieces of their health are not put together and they're sort of brushed aside, right? Like a lot of it is like, oh, just take this, you'll be okay. Or, you know, whatever the standard answers are. So I agree, we're not done at 40 or at 50. Some of, some people are just beginning. I love, for example, in the practice just yesterday, you know, People are going back to school. They're going back to law school at 50. They're going yes. back to business school. They're going back to get their PhD. I mean, they're doing amazing, incredible things and we're seeing them rise up into positions of leadership. You can't do that when you feel badly. So nothing could be more important than some of the work that you're doing and talking about. But the part that intrigues me, what are we missing? 200 papers, I never saw them going through medical school. You know, dealing with menopause naturally, I've had to find all of that on my own through practice and dealing with patients. You know, what are women missing when it comes to understanding what's happening with their hormones? Yeah, so that was 200 medical papers on PMS all those years ago. Now there are thousands of medical papers yeah. and new publications all the time. And unfortunately, the doctors don't see them. What they're basically missing is two things. One is, well, I'd say two most important things. The first thing is that we did five separate studies uh, on women of childbearing age in the early days. And we found that between 50 to 80% of them had low levels of things like magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc, essential fatty acids, vitamin D and so on. So that affects your brain chemistry and your hormone function. And you end up being a bit like a bucket with a hole in it, functioning in economy mode, mm -hmm. firing on two cylinders instead of four, and it's impossible to feel well. So that's right. the very first thing. And no one teaches you along the way how to put back into your body what time and nature has taken out and how to have this midlife refuel. And then the second thing is that we've got, when our ovaries stop producing estrogen, we've got empty estrogen receptors in our cells. And the body is so hungry for estrogen because it doesn't know how to survive without it because estrogen is so necessary for everything from hormone function to your brain function to just feeling uh youthful yeah and looking youthful not just on the outside but on the inside as well so right. important little places will dry out as well and we know that over 50 percent of women have got vaginal dryness and we know that huge numbers of women feel that they've got brain fog and yep. dementia mm -hmm. approaching they feel anxious with panic attacks and palpitations and all of those things, when you meet the receptor sites, when you, we teach them how to consume naturally occurring estrogen and mother nature's estrogen, if there was a race between hormone replacement therapy, mother nature's estrogen and the harmful environmental estrogens that we call yeah. xenoestrogens, then mother nature's estrogen would win, jump into the receptor site and seal it off. And that's what we want because in the absence of any other estrogen, these harmful environmental estrogens can increase our risk of cancer and can make us feel really unwell. So it's important to put mother nature's estrogen in little and often. And the good thing about that is, apart from protecting yourself, is you're fooling the brain into thinking you've got normal circulating estrogen. Because when you look at estradiol, which is the estrogen you had before menopause, mm -hmm. and the isoflavone, mother nature's estrogen, under the microscope, it looks like spot the difference. There's hardly any difference. Yeah. And so we can fool our brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating estrogen. And so instead of sending the thermal surges through our body to try and kickstart our ovaries back into function, the brain just feels everything's normal and the hot flashes, night sweats disappear, 
and anxiety and achiness and brain fog and all of that stuff go too. And a woman can literally be symptom free. In on my one-to-one -one patients, it was five months and they were on a maintenance plan. But even when I set up this six week course after the million women saw those yeah. films, mm -hmm. because I wanted to just take all the research and put it into six bite-sized modules, we found even after six weeks, women were halfway through their refuel and having amazing benefits and seeing a big light at the end of the tunnel, which even surprised me. So it gives them huge hope that they can really be the best version of themselves and they can stay in the driving seat, continue working and competing with men in the workplace. They can continue feeling their sexy selves so that they can have decent quality physical relationship with their partner without it being painful and feeling switched on again below the waist because 70% yeah. of women in our relationship survey said they felt they lost their libido. And, and it doesn't that younger and younger too, not just menopause, but even younger women are having yeah. that issue going down into the thirties even. So let's, let's help women understand this. So you've given us hope, you've given us uh, your experience and your knowledge. What do they need to do to help with building estrogen levels back up or at least fooling the body into thinking it has estrogen? What is that protocol? What is that plan? Does it start with food or taking certain things or what is the approach? Yeah, so the, what I, my program we're looking at, the first thing is getting people into good nutritional shape. Yep. And so in chapter two of the book, I'm focusing on actually tracking nutritional deficiencies, detecting them because our face, our skin, our hair, our nails, it will all show signs of vitamin and mineral deficiency. So we're teaching women how to recognize those. So if you've got your hair's not growing or it's split and brittle, your nails are dry, or you've got greasy skin, dry skin, cracked, um, cracking at the corners of your mouth or red patches at the side of your nose, all of that means something. And so once you can isolate what your nutritional deficiencies are likely to be, then there's another section of the book that shows you which foods are rich in those nutrients so that you can make your diet more nutrient dense. And we take out of the diet some things in the short term that are likely to impede the absorption of good nutrients, things that contain phytates, for example, um, in, and tannin, so red wine and uh, tannin in tea, that kind of thing, because it binds with iron and magnesium and zinc and calcium and stops them from being properly absorbed. So in the short term, while we're having this refuel, which takes about three months, it's a bit of a detox, but for everything we ask women to take out of their diet, we're offering two or three or even more delicious alternatives that they can use and they can find their way through the book because we've got everything from menus and recipes to fast options and shopping lists. So if you love cooking, there's something there for you whether you're a vegetarian or vegan or whether you eat meat and fish, or if you hate cooking, as many women do, then there's lots of fast, healthy options that you can pick up. And there's a shopping list so you know exactly how to, how to identify those. So getting yourself into good nutritional shape is the very first thing to do. The second thing is to consume naturally occurring estrogen. And that comes in the form of soy and flax seeds in particular. There are some other foods as well, and I list those out in the book, but soy, things like edamame beans and maybe soy milk and soy yogurt and that kind of thing. You don't necessarily have to eat tofu. It doesn't have to be weird and different, but you can incorporate these things little and often. You can put flax seeds, which are great for your hair and your skin and your nails, as well as your hormones into your diet, sprinkle them on your cereal in the morning. You can put them on salad and fruit salad. And if you want to take some red clover as well, then we tend to use that, a pill that's been standardized and been through published research to show that it's both safe and effective. So it doesn't have an adverse effect on the lining of the uterus or the breast tissue. So everything we're doing is really safe. And then, go sorry, go. No, I was just gonna ask uh, with soy, so many women ask me isoflavins about the risk of breast cancer especially if they've had a previous history of breast cancer or a family history of breast cancer, how do you answer that question? So I've dealt with that in the book and there's some really good research to show that it's cancer protective. And if you've had breast cancer, you can prevent a second episode. And it is really important to know that 
and to know that you can feel confident about that. And the research that's been done is plentiful and the researchers are very well respected. So, and I've talked at the Royal College of Nursing in London alongside people who specialize in breast cancer and they agree. So it, it is um, a fallacy that it's going to uh, be um, something that's going to cause you further problems. And I also hear from people who say, well, my husband can't share my food because he'll grow breasts. Right. And that's not true either. Yeah. It's right. Asian communities who've been consuming yeah. this for years. They don't, men don't have breasts and uh, they're perfectly virile. So it, 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 everything we do is safe and natural. And it's just teaching women how to do things in moderation that are gonna work for them and work for their symptom sets because everyone goes through menopause in a different way. And perimenopause can start as early as your early forties because it's the eight years leading up to menopause. And some poor women even go into menopause early. And so they do need to be doing these things. We reach our peak in terms of estrogen and our bone mass and so on by the time we're 35. Mm -hmm. And especially if we have babies and breastfeed, it's downhill after that. And so it's really a question of the earlier you meet your needs and learn to meet your needs, the, the better you're going to be and the less likely you are to go down the black hole of menopause yeah. and feel like it's the end of life as you knew it. Yeah. I always tell patients it's your nutrition, your gut, your liver, they really determine how you'll do in menopause. After nutrition and red clover, what are some of your other suggestions in getting these hormones balanced more naturally? Okay, so I've described my program as a pie with all the different sections and you have to have a bite of each of them because there's no magic solution, unfortunately. Right. So after doing the things I've described in your diet, we're then looking at supplements that have been through properly conducted clinical trials. And so chapter four of the book focuses on those and talks about the supplements that have been shown to be safe and standardized because so many supplements that are on the market don't even contain what they say on the label, unfortunately. So people are spending money and really wasting it. We don't know even that they're not harmful because right. um, we don't even really know what's in them. So it's really important to choose the supplements that are going to work for your symptom set. And I do go into details about that and I those and I name them. Um, and also then to do some relaxation. So formal relaxation. And if you're no good at meditation, then there are apps that you can use that have been created by neuroscientists to take you into a really deep, relaxed state, just sweeps you up and takes you off somewhere really relaxing and wonderful and then delivers you back feeling like you've been recharged, like your phone plugged into the mains. And that helps to rewire your brain. Also, relaxation has been shown, formal relaxation has been shown to reduce your hot flashes and night sweats by 50 or 60%. So that's a really good thing to do as well. Yeah. And especially with COVID in the air, it helps us to calm down and relax and reduces our anxiety and panic. What's your, what are your favorite apps for that? I'm curious what you- I, I love an app called Paziz, which I've been using for many, many years. Uh, it's free to start with. And then- What is it again? What's the name of it? Paziz, P-Z-I-Z-Z. -Z. So yeah. Um, and that- really my patients love that too I talk about it in the book because it really does take you into a deeply relaxed state and bring you out again feeling very refreshed so, and it's like building a muscle you just need to persist for a few weeks and then the minute you switch it on you just go into this amazing place that helps you to recharge and feel that you've been asleep for a few hours so um, I did it actually just before I came on here today because I've been talking all day. My first yeah. meeting was about eight o'clock this morning and I thought, wow, doing a live video at five o'clock in the afternoon is going to be a challenge. So yeah. I managed to find 20 minutes. That's kind of less. I normally do 30 minutes, but even in 20 minutes, it made me feel as if I'd had a recharge. And so I think that's very valuable. And then finally, exercise. And exercise is important for so many reasons when we get to this stage in life. I'm not talking about a marathon or massive aerobics necessarily, because if you've got high cortisol stress hormone, then big aerobics can make you feel even worse. So we're looking at, it's not a competition either. So it's helping women to maybe do some singing and dancing to their favorite music, some stretching. Um, I had a TV series some years ago, and one of the series was on joint health, on use it or lose it. If you don't use it, then you're going to get achy and feel old before your time. 
So it's making sure you've got all the nutrients you need and then stretching and keeping supple because exercise also helps if you do some moderately aerobic exercise like dancing, it can actually release endorphins, which make you feel good. It helps to speed up your metabolism so that you're using up the fat instead of it piling on the pounds around the middle. Right. And it helps you to rewire and oxygenate your brain so that you feel really well and the endorphins make you feel good too. So lots of reasons to exercise and just building up, maybe doing it first thing in the morning to your favorite music or doing a workout to YouTube if you're not fit enough to go and do a whole big workout, but eventually just find the exercise that really works for you. And so doing that combination of dietary and lifestyle changes and making sure you've got the supplements you need for the short term, it's just going to help you feel brand new. And yeah. at the end of the day, we then work out, well, what do you need in the longer term to keep feeling good, to keep your bones nice and strong so you don't get osteoporosis, to prevent heart disease and to prevent dementia? Because you can, the research shows you can do all of those things, which is just so important because if we're going to live, we're expected to work till we're 70 at right. least now. So yeah. you want to be really at the top of your game. Right. And then why should you fall over? when right. you're even older than that. I've seen people outside doing yoga in their nineties. They've been, I was at an aquafit class. There was a woman who had a, her hundredth birthday and she wow. was still doing aquafit. So I think it's, you know, if we can keep up these healthy habits, then they're gonna make us really enjoy every single breath that we have. And that's it. so important. We're so it. wise when we get to midlife. It's just a crying shame that women fall over and can't function. And I just right. feel it's right. not just. No, it's not. We're so foolish in our youth and then we waste our wisdom later not feeling good. So we got to balance that equation for sure. I want, I know we're getting close on time, maybe just a quick second, because this is something that comes up over and over again on libido and women not having a sex drive. What are you seeing the most? Well, the vaginal dryness usually stops them in their tracks because sex becomes painful. Right. So we tend to use, uh, there's a product called Membracin, which is a C. buckthorn product that's been through clinical trials. So we use that. And also the, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, that by taking soy and flax seeds and red clover, that also helps the vaginal tissue to get back to normal and the factory lights to go back on so that we've got the cells being produced that create the mucus and the elasticity. And once that's done, usually when you have your refuel, libido comes back automatically, but for some women it doesn't. And there are some other supplements that I talk about in the book that you can take to boost your libido so that you do feel that you're switched on again. And you can enjoy the mature relationship and maybe having more time and your kids maybe have disappeared and left home or it's yeah. just a time when you can have good intimacy with your partner and feel well and pain-free so that it can be a great experience and it doesn't have to be the end of life as you knew it and we did a survey on men as well uh -huh. and found that men feel rejected and they often feel threatened at the time and scared and frustrated because they don't have open conversations women are too scared to talk about it because right. they're afraid it's going to open a can of worms and maybe he may want to find someone who has isn't going through menopause right. and the men are too scared to talk about it because they don't really no one understands that there's a solution and right. as soon as you know there's a solution and that this is a really a, just a short-term transition you can partner up and go through it together and it pays dividends at the end because you come out really close and having much better physical relationship as well as being back to feeling the person that you'd like to be and your partner gets back the person that they fell for in the first place. Yeah, I love it. Such great advice about menopause and midlife and midlife refueling. I love that instead of the midlife crisis and how as super women, we can do what we wanna do. We just have to learn to take care of ourselves and guard our health. Marion, you've talked about nutrition. That is the foundation and continuing to start there if you're not sure where to start. And then get Marion's book, Manage Your Menopause Naturally is the book. Where's the book available? 
I have all book outlets and uh, you can get it from Amazon. And also on our website recently, on my website, marionstuart.com, we've just launched a midlife refuel club. So people can come and track their symptoms. They can come and get lots of self-help advice. And I'm doing live sessions as well. So tomorrow, for example, there's a live session where people can come and get their questions answered because we really want to spread the word and Great. help women to get established on this program. They can use the book if they're suffering mildly to moderately and do it all themselves. If they need extra help, then we have our six week course and there's plenty of help available as well. So it's really the beginning of a whole new challenge and then a whole new chapter. And I think if you can maybe just through the end of this COVID season, if you can just focus in your bubble on learning to nurture yourself and making yourself a priority it will pay huge dividends when the world opens up again because you're going to feel brand new. And, that's yeah. so and that might be the gift of COVID for sure. So if anybody yeah. watching and listening today would like to connect with you, what is the best way for them to do so? Uh, they can go to my website, just marionstuart.com. That's M-A-R-Y-O-N-S-T-E-W-A-R-T.com and come and get in touch through either join the Midlife Refuel Club or just email us and we will, we have live sessions very often so they can come and get their questions answered. And if they want some help, then we organize a 15 minute consultation just to talk about their situation and work out what's the best way forward. Okay, perfect. All right, well, thank you for taking some time out today to join me, That's I appreciate okay, it so much. Friend. And for everyone else watching or listening, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Superwoman Wellness. Remember, we're on Apple iTunes and Spotify, so rate and review it and share it with your friends. I will see you guys next time. Bye.